want to uh, put yourself back about six or seven hundred years. Just imagine for a moment you lived six or seven hundred years ago. Every, pretty much everybody here would be a peasant or a serf. There'll be a few nobles amongst us. That's not you, right? Your life is dictated by the sun. You get up in the morning, you grab a few tools, and you go out and you work in the fields all day. And this structure in society is there to keep you there. So your children, your children's children, they all become peasants and serfs bound to the land. And that's the social structure that you're in. So this poor fellow is you guys six or seven hundred years ago. Now, fortunately, we've had some tool development over the last few million years so that um, we don't just have to use our muscles to get work done anymore. And the best example of this is a steam engine, of course, which can produce the work of about 10,000 people. And we're all familiar with that type of machine. And we're also very familiar with an information technology machine, like we see a mobile phone today. It's not only a communication device, it's an intelligent device that connects us. And so we're starting to see machines do much more, of course, than, than just basic work and getting us out of that trap of society that people were in a few hundred years ago. But what's going to happen in the next decade is very exciting. Before I get into that, thank you One Million Cups for having me present today. As Matt said, I'm Pete Cooper. We brought Skillion here uh, in March last year. Um, we do a range of IoT services, that's our focus. I'll get into a bit more in the presentation. We're up at Ben Franklin, and we've got some uh, very interesting projects that we're working on and talk about here today. This is a McKinsey um, outlay of what they think is going to happen over the next decade. Now on this side, you've got some of the more mechanical things, but on the other side, what we're going to talk mostly about is the um, Internet of Things devices, the mobile phones and the mobile technology. And that's where we're focused as a company, and that's where I've been working for the last 25 years. There's not going to be a bigger change coming than the Internet of Things. If you don't know what Internet of Things is, it's essentially anything that we want to connect to the Internet and the means to do that. Usually it's an electronic device with the radio. We can connect pretty much anything. When we want to gather data in, around, or on that device, or we want to control that, we use an Internet of Things tool to do that. 75 billion devices. That's 10 devices for every single man, woman, and child on Earth by 2025. And North America is going to be a big part of that. So over a quarter of that is going to be in this part of the world. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited to the Microsoft Partners Conference. And a big theme for that was retail and what's happening in the retail market. One great example of that, has anybody been to McDonald's lately? Just raise your hand. <laughs> Come on. All right. Not you, you, you. <laughs> You're all guilty. <laughs> but if you haven't, you should go just to see what's happening. You walk in there and there's a kiosk. You don't have to queue and wait for someone to serve you. You can go to the kiosk and select in great detail what you want. How much sauce you want, how many chips you want, what trick you want. You don't have to communicate with a person. You pay and then you pick up a tag. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but that tag is also an IoT device. When you sit down at your table, they bring the food to you. That's the first exchange you have with a human being. Now, I think that was a pretty good customer experience. It was fast. I didn't have to uh, negotiate with somebody about what I wanted, and I got exactly what I wanted really quick to my table. Improved the customer experience. On the other side of things, they don't have to have as many staff, and staff are expensive, they need to be trained and managed and need to pay for their services. They can lower their operating costs. And this is the basis, I believe, of Internet of Things and where its power is. is when, they, when you can improve the customer experience while simultaneously lowering the costs, that's the sweet spot. Where else, and this is a big theme for the Microsoft Partners Conference, was what's happening in supermarket shelves. Sensors, including cameras and other devices, are detecting what stock is on those shelves 
and then automatically triggering stop refills. And it's not just the person that's got to refill it, but it's the whole supply chain going backwards. Re um, hotels and, and resorts. Now, a colleague of mine has been 10 years to become an overnight success, and he says he's kicking goals in Europe right now, he's over there right now, rolling out thousands and thousands of IoT devices in hotels and resorts. He uses a simple example. The soap dispenser in every hotel bathroom, when it gets down to a certain level, the IoT device triggers a flag which goes to the system and it goes out to all the people that need to know. And it's not just the person who comes and cleans the room, it's the floor manager, it's the hotel manager, it's the back office refilling and it even goes as far as the supplier who supplies this. So all those people know exactly the stock of all the, of all the um, services and consumables across the hotel. And that's just one example of it. Trucking and logistics. We were talking to a company only a few weeks ago that wanted to track the tractors, as you call them here, and trailers. Tractor, trailer. I didn't know that, that was called a tractor over here until I spoke to this guy. And they actually lose some of the tractors, uh, sorry, some of the trailers. They don't know where they are. They go all across the country, they can't find them. But they also want to use um, tracking device to work out um, exactly how many miles they've done so they can schedule maintenance and retirement and planning. Again, driving efficiency down. Construction. We're working on a bit of intellectual property at Skillion to um, uh, manage and control and track cordless tools. Now, cordless tools go missing, as do many, many tools in the construction industry, so that's an obvious win to try and prevent that. But additionally, we can use this to, to do um, a lot of tracking associated with um, efficiency around the construction site, and especially when it comes to servicing. We can actually demonstrate to, it, to customers when and how tools were used in a report exactly for any particular job that was done. So I'll make a couple of bold predictions about the future. <laughs> Fleets and shared devices, and I put down social change. So we saw the change from the Middle Ages to today, but perhaps a little more, one closer to home, is when I grew up in the 70s and 80s, I would, the, the basic norm was that you would get a job and you would buy an asset, and then you could enjoy the experience of owning that asset, a car, for example. The paradigm is shifting. People say, what experience do I want to have? And how can I pay for that? And quite often it's not buying the asset. It's sharing the asset. So this is a social change and it's driven a quite a few new and innovative um, companies which you would know, Uber being one, Lyft, Airbnb, but also the surge of um, shared bikes and e-bikes and scooters. So people are enjoying the experience for a very, very low price. Autonomous taxis. Not so much a social change here. But when you take the, the cost of the driver out of a taxi, you do lower the cost of using a taxi service. It's about unit economics. And if I could offer you a taxi service at half or a quarter of what you're paying for taxis today, people would use it, they'd use it more, and that would become the norm. <coughs> Autonomous deliveries, we're seeing the likes of Amazon and others doing deliveries. I believe we're going to see robots doing deliveries and drones. What's holding back drones is not the technology or the unit economics, it's simply regulations. Aviation moves quite slowly. And finally, a market for your data. Facebook, Google, Amazon and others have the luxury at the moment of taking all our data, making a big profit on it as they sell it back out again. So I can, with Facebook, as you probably know, go right down to very low levels of detail about a particular person that I want to target. Male between 35 and 45, living in Manhattan, single with an income over 100,000, interests in biking and aviation, bang, I've got him. And I'm firing hands at him. That's great for Facebook, it's great for Google, but it's not so great for everybody else. I believe that in the future we'll be able to sell our data. Not just the data that we generate out of our computers and our mobile phones or through the platforms that they're created, but the data that's generated from our devices, which we're also uh, plugged into and that we own and that we operate. But I think for that to happen, it's a, it's a social change or at least an awareness. There'll be a certain amount of pressure created 
and then there'll be entrepreneurs that will come and step in and create a market for our data. So what do we do at, at Skillion? Well, we've been very focused on micro-mobility or bikes, especially e-bikes and e-scooters. We've developed a product which bolts onto any bike or scooter and provides a rich dashboard of information to the rider. So one of the problems of riding uh, an e-scooter or an e-bike when you get on them is that you, you've got no means to navigate to where you go. You have to keep stopping getting out your phone. Our device will help you get there and you can keep both hands on the, on the handlebars. But importantly, it's a plug-in device which can turn any bike or scooter into a fleet. So 2,000 bike stores across the United States, hotels and others, they don't have to worry about how they're going to make a fleet work. Ours is a plug-in device. So they can operate that. An extension of that, and we've got 60 application concept, concepts, is helmet detection. Using machine learning, we can detect whether someone's wearing a helmet or not. This is a problem in some places like India because the fleet manager can actually be fined when people don't wear helmets on their bikes. And the final uh, product is a problem that everybody has when they ride a bike. Every single bike rider says this to me. Mm. When they state the problem, what's coming up behind you when you're on the road? If you ride a bike, you try to turn around, you pull the handlebars, it's quite dangerous. Mirrors are very small, that work very well. This will solve that problem. Again, it's machine learning applied to an IoT device, applied to a fleet. So, to wrap up, Skillin is an IoT technology company. We provide a service to help businesses move and take advantage of IoT. We have design, electronics, we can also handle supply chain and production and all that. A big area of what we do is the glue and the brains that ties all together with software. It includes device software, back-end software, machine learning software, and provisioning software. One thing I think that makes us a little unique is we do already have our own IoT back-end. So if any of your companies that you know or your own company wants to quickly get into IoT, it's very easy for us to pilot a system up and running with small amount of costs. Well, thank you for listening. Great, thank you.